Hi, I'm Jane from Poppy Patchwork and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a 12 inch square called Tiara Crown. For this you are going to need four three and a half inch squares in background fabric and four two and three quarter inch squares in background fabric. In fabric A you're going to need four two inch squares, one four and three quarter inch square and eight three and a half inch squares. In fabric B you're going to need one seven and three quarter inch square and one three and a half inch square. In fabric C you're going to need one four and a quarter inch square. Before we get started I'd just like to say thank you for liking, watching, commenting and subscribing to my YouTube channel. It's just amazing how my channel has grown and I'm really thankful for all the wonderful and kind comments. It really inspires me to keep going and make more videos. I've designed this quilt block notebook which I use when I'm planning out the blocks that I'm going to do videos for and you may find it useful. You can buy it from Amazon and if you scan this code using your phone it'll take you straight to the Amazon page for it. Now let's get quilting. I've called this block Tiara Crown and I've designed it myself and it needs um, small flying geese and also larger flying geese which have the corners flipped and I will show you how to do this in the video. So we're going to start by making the four small flying geese and these will end up a size of three by one and a half inches once sewn into the block. And I'm going to show you the four at a time method. So for this, we're going to need the four and three quarter inch square in fabric A and we're going to need four of the two and three quarter inch squares in the background fabric. So we start by drawing a diagonal line on the wrong side of all of the background fabrics. So to do this, I start in the center and I draw the line to one corner and then I draw it to the other corner. That just helps prevent the fabric from dragging underneath my pencil. And then once we've done that, we place two of these. It doesn't look right at all. So that looks better, that's the correct size and the correct fabric, so that's better. So what we do with this is we place one of these background fabrics in a corner and I'm just going to pop a pin in that and then you place a second one in the opposite corner. And the diagonal line that you've drawn should form a straight line across the center of the block. So I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a line of stitching a quarter inch away from the line on both sides of the line. So back at the cutting board I'm just going to remove those pins and now I'm going to cut along the drawn line. And now we're going to press those seams. So 
So I'm going to begin by setting the seam and then pressing the seams towards the smaller triangles. And now we're going to return to the cutting board. So with the other two squares, we're going to place one of these in the corner and we're going to make sure that that diagonal line runs down through the centre of these two other triangles. Then we're going to pop a pin in that. So I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew once again on both sides of the line a quarter inch away from the line. Back at the cutting board, I'm going to remove those pins. And now I'm going to cut along that drawn line. And then I'm going to press those seams. So once again, I'm going to set the seams and press the seams towards the small triangle. So now we have four small flying geese and these need to be trimmed. Now I like to use this flying geese ruler. It's called the Ultimate Flying Geese Tool and it's um, produced by Creative Grids. If you don't have one of these rulers, um, I do have a video on how to trim flying geese using a standard ruler if you right click on the link above it will take you to that video. So using this ruler the first thing you do is trim number one stated on the ruler and you check what size that you're cutting to. So in this case I'm cutting um, my finished block is going to be one and a half by three inches so I'm going to be cutting on C for here. So I line the dotted lines on the C in the apex of that um, triangle up here, and then the lines should run down either side. And then I'm going to trim up one side and along the top. And then I'm going to rotate the ruler around and I'm going to rotate the unit around. And again, I'm going to line the uh, dotted lines on the ruler with the apex of the triangle. And I'm going to cut up one side and along the top. So there you've got a beautifully trimmed half square triangle. I'll put onto the video the size that you need to trim it if you are using a standard ruler. So we're going to repeat that process 
to make the larger flying geese. So I'm just going to refer to my book and for the larger flying geese we're going to need the seven and three quarter inch square in the fabric B which is this large one and in fabric C we're going to need four four and a quarter inch squares so I'll put those to one side and that's these ones here so like we did before we're going to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of these small square fabrics So two of these are pinned into opposite corners of the larger square with that diagonal line running across the centre of the square. So like before, I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine and sew two lines of stitching a quarter of an inch away from that drawn line. cutting board I'm just going to remove those pins and then I'm going to cut along the drawn line now I'm going to press those seams I'm going to start by setting the seams and then pressing the seams towards the smaller triangles. And now those final squares are placed right sides together in the corner with that diagonal line crossing through those two triangle pieces. So now I'm going to go back to the sewing machine to sew those two lines of stitching. So back at the cutting board. I'm going to remove the pins and then cut through that drawn line. And these need to be pressed again. So we'll set the seam and then press the seams towards the smaller triangle. And then we're going to trim them. So this time we're trimming them to um, a finished size of three by six and on this ruler that's following the F lines.
Now before I add the flipped piece to the uh, these larger flying geese, I'm going to lay it out in the block layout. So I'm going to refer to my notebook and see what I wrote out in that. I'm just rotating those diagonals so that they're all going the same way, these corner ones. And then, um, just checking I've got it all the right way. Yes. So what's going to happen is these three and a half inch squares, we're going to use half of them and they are going to how are they going to look? Let's see. see. I think these go this way round. This is why it's important to lay it out, otherwise you'll end up sewing the squares on in the wrong place. So that's better. So these are going to be, we're going to use the diagonals and they are going to come along and be placed like that. So the first thing I need to do is draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of these eight three and a half inch squares. So I'll just move these out slightly I'll probably have to put it back into block layout again. Um, so. Now, because this is a diagonal, st a striped fabric, when I sew on top of that line, I want the diagonals to be going the same way. So I'm just going to see. So those are not going the same way. And this one was like that. And that was like that. So We can have it like that, but I don't think that's right. We can have it like that. But again, I don't think that's right. We can have it like that. I think that is, that's the, the way we want to do it. So that means that the diagonal has to run this way down across the diagonals, if you can see them. If you don't have diagonal fabric, you won't have this matching to do. So let me have a look. So this one was drawn on the wrong way round. So I'm going to redraw that line. And now for all the other ones, I'm going to make sure they're the same as this one here. So I'm going to lay the diagonals in the same direction and then draw the diagonal line across the right diagonal of the block. So now that I've done that, I'm going to lay everything back out in the block layout so that I know that I'm doing the right thing.
Okay, so this one is going to be pinned in this corner here of the block. And when I and then you will cut this piece off here and this will flip back. So I'm flipping that back to make sure that the diagonals are going in the correct direction and they are. So I'm going to pop a pin in here and a pin in here. And when I take that over to the sewing machine, I will sew on top of that drawn line. I'm going to do that with the other three flying geese. So I'm going to take those over to the sewing machine and sew on top of the line. I've sewn on top of that line and now what I need to do is line the quarter inch line of the ruler up on that line and then cut a quarter inch away from that line, which is what I've done already. And you can see this is the corner piece that I've cut away. So we just put those to one side and then what happens is this piece needs to get pressed over to one side. So I've done that with all of these, and now we have to take them to the um, ironing mat to press them. So we need to set the seam, and then we need to press towards that triangle in the corner. So now that these are pressed, we need to repeat the process on the other side. So I'm going to take my other square, I'm going to place it right sides together. And um, we don't want the line following the stitch line here that we already have. It needs to be going in the other direction. So that drawn line needs to kind of cross over this piece that we've already done. Now, before I pin it in place, I want to make sure if I've actually drawn that line in the right place. So I'm going to flick that back. And yes, I'm quite happy with that. So I've got the lines coming in this way and then in this way. So they're kind of opposite in terms of how the lines are looking. So I'm going to pin these all in place before I take them over to the sewing machine where I'll sew on top of that line again. Okay, so I'll take those over to the sewing machine. So I'm going to remove the pins from these and then I'm going to cut a quarter inch away from the line. So I've sewn on the line and now I need to cut a quarter inch away from that line. So I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to line the quarter inch line of the ruler on top of the sewn line and then I'm going to cut along here 
and this piece gets discarded and this piece gets folded back over. So now I'm going to press those seams. So we start by setting the seam and then pressing that triangle into the corner. And so what we have created now with that double flying geese or flipping the edges is this beautiful little diamond here which I think is rather lovely. So I'm now going to put everything back into the block layout. I'm just going to check the diagram that I drew in my notebook. And I've got these the wrong way around, so these need to be this way around. So, yep, that is the block layout. So the first thing I'm going to do is sew together this centerpiece here. And I'm just going to have a look at the orientation of the lines on my diagonals. Um, I'm not going to get them all going the same way. Yep, I think I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to start by sewing the um, sewing them in columns. To create this little centerpiece in the block. Now for this one, I'm going to sew face up so that I can see where the two seams cross over and make sure that I don't blunt my point there. And I can also pop these on the other end and sew them all at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to take those over to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam. back and I'm just going to line them lay them down in the block order so that I can decide which way I want to press the seams so I'm going to press the seams towards the squares as shown with the arrows on this picture so I'm going to set the seam and then press towards the little square. And then on this one, again, I'm going to set that seam and this time I'm going to press towards the center square. So now what we can do is put everything back into the block order like this and then we're going to match those seams and sew these two pieces together. So because those seams have been pressed in opposite directions, they will nest easily here. And once again, 
I will sew with this piece facing me so that I can see the stitching and make sure I don't blunt that point. So back to the sewing machine. So back over from the sewing machine and I've decided to go to press these seams open for a flatter finish. So I'm going to set the seams and then from the wrong side, I'm going to press them open. There we go, that is the centre part of the block and it's looking really nice. So now I'm going to bring all the other pieces back into the block layout. And I'm going to make sure that my background fabrics are right sides up. And then we're going to put these lovely double flying geese onto the block layout as well. And now I'm going to sew these together in columns. Now on this piece, we don't want to uh, blunt these two points, but we also don't want to blunt this point here. Um, I'm going to sew with this point visible, but be mindful that you've got two points underneath that you aren't going to be able to see. Okay, so back over to the sewing machine and sew with the quarter inch seam. So back at the ironing board, I'm just going to lay it back out into block layout. So I'm going to press the seams. Um, this seam is going to go upwards towards the corner square and this one's going to come down towards the corner square. And same on this side. And here in the middle, I'm going to press the seams in towards this middle block and that will help me nest all these seams together. So start by setting the seams and then pressing towards that corner block. Now this centre one, we're going to press towards that centre block. So I need to move that one out of the way. And now do the final strip. So back to block layout. And now I can pin these together and the seams should nest. And once again, I'm going to sew so that I can see both of these seams intersecting so that I don't blunt that point.
So we're going to take it back over to the sewing machine and sew the last two seams of this block. So now we're going to set these seams and I'm going to press them towards the corner squares. And then give the block a nice good press. So congratulations, you have made my tiara crown block. And I have to say, I really like these diamond pieces here around my crown. Here are some quilt options. This is an illustration of the quilt repeating the same block. There is no sashing or borders. But the use of the white background fabric in the block allows the design and fabrics to stand out. This is an illustration of the quilt repeating the same block placed on point. There is no sashing or borders, but you would need to add blocks in background fabric in between the blocks shown here with the stars. And add setting triangles around the edges again shown here with the stars. This is an illustration of the quilt repeating the same block but with sashing, cornerstones and borders. And finally this is an illustration of a sampler quilt using some of the blocks from this quilt block series. The sashing in this quilt is in the white background fabric. The cornerstones and border is in a darker fabric to pop and frame the quilt. Want to learn more? Watch another one of my videos from the Quilt Block series. Click above to go to my playlist. I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. More of these videos will be posted, so please tune in. Thank you for watching and bye for now.